the other side. Now presenting. Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Yes, we are, and we are in for an exciting time because we have the highly energetic, not afraid to drop the F-bombs like my boy, guest, Damon Olivencia, personal development ally, you know, he doesn't like to call it a life coach, but you know, you get my drift. Pro wrestler, motivational speaker, your YouTube channel is what, the Ninth Warrior? I forget the, the number. Warrior. 11th, okay. Well, I knew it was a prime number. Okay, no. Mine is not a prime number. Uh, an odd number. <laughs> so we've got Jamin Olivencia. Uh, it's a new math. And, of course, we have the wonderful Jennifer Doran. I love you, Jennifer. I love you, Jamin. I miss oh. you guys working together, too, under my roof. Yes. I'm excited. Yeah. So, anyway, you know, Jamin, he's been on the show a lot of times. Uh, you know, to share his perspective as a personal development ally. And here's what he's going to talk about with, of course, Eric probably butting in from time to time. When you think about judging someone or something, it could be that you are actually insecure and not taking action on some sort of internal issues. And we all got them, okay? We all got We all judge. And I mean, I do, I mean I'm not proud of it, but yeah, sometimes I judge and it's unfair. And not what Eric teaches me. So I'm not Jesus Christ. Sorry. Anyway, so he's going to help us explore owning it and what that really means. And how the simple realization can make the hectic, uh, you know, chaos around us a little more peaceful. And um, when most of the videos that uh, YouTube that my daughter does on her ChristinaBrawley.com YouTube um, deal, she ends up with be yourself and own it. And I just love that. Be yourself and own it. But anyway, I'm not going to mm. take up any precious real estate in this radio show. We're going to pass it on to Eric, Jennifer, and Jamin. What's up, everyone? Uh, just first and foremost, I want to just say thank you for tuning in today and just thanks for your time and thanks for holding space for uh, Jennifer, myself, Elisa, and Eric, and 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 just allowing your support to once again pierce the uh, the beauty that we see around us. So it's 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 incredibly awesome just to be here. And Eric, what's up? Jennifer, hello, Elisa, I love you. I love you too. So I am constantly fascinated by the human condition, and one of the things. I think I'm what, annoyed what by it, me... but go ahead. I'm, 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 I'm... <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's what's so cool. You know, it's like um, for me as a coach or a personal development ally or someone who, who's just assisting others in their own lives, I think one of the challenges of that is, is constantly evaluating yourself and, and looking at my own actions and, and understanding the – line of actions that have caused me to be where I'm at today. And something that yeah. I think that has been sticking out to me a lot more recently is, is simply observing others who are constantly blaming everything outside of themselves, but never taking responsibility for their own actions. Mm. And I find that to be the root of most of their issues. And most people say, shit, my life is a mess. My life is, is in chaos right now and they're blaming others or maybe their job or this or that yeah. and, External and not really exactly. And, and it's easy to hack at the, the branches, but most of the time you want to hack at the root. Oh, I you love that. That's focus very profound. Towards the middle. Yeah. Well, the, the branches are representations of expressions of yourself. This is, this is what we've done, or this is what you might have done, or what you used to do, or what you're thinking even. And so when you are neglecting the root and hacking at the branches, you're, you're, you're once again looking at the external. But if we're talking internal here, if we're talking where most of our suffering comes from, it's, it's basically because we see ourselves in others. And I think we're actually afraid of that. And then the other layer of that is we're afraid to have the conversation about that. And I think with that's ourselves? where it's getting a little bit tricky. Um, I, I, think, I think it starts with ourselves, of course. Like how many – okay, I'll, I'll, I'll challenge all of our listeners right now. How many times have you been probably being a little bit of an asshole throughout the day, 
and you didn't want to admit it, but then when you go home that night, you lock the door, you're by yourself, and you said, ah, shit, maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I could have cooled off today on that person, or maybe oh, yeah. I've been a bit much here. We've all been there. It's all of us have been there. Human. And but that's the, the cool part. I think that we've, all, we've mm-hmm. all done that, but we can all use that as a teachable moment, you know? We, the, the, that's the beauty of things like that. We can use this, if we choose to, to make to, to, to help our souls evolve. Like, okay, go ahead. Well, yeah, no, no, I, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's as simple as, uh, shit, I remember when I was a kid, I'd ask my mom for something, and I didn't get what I wanted. So what I would do is I'd probably scream at her, yell at her, uh, half-ass cry a little bit, um, and then I would go upstairs and I realized I wasn't getting what I wanted. So in the midst of crying, I would suddenly just stop. Wow. Well, your and, mother and was I remember rock. that. Well, I remember thinking, I remember thinking like, holy shit, like, am I faking this just so I can get my way? Am mm-hmm. I, am I manipulating a situation right now just so I can get, because I didn't get my way? Like I realized in the midst of crying that I stopped crying. So was I really even that sad? And I think wow. it's very How old easy you? to, oh, probably you? nine. Oh, probably okay. Nine. Yeah. yeah. So you're not, you were not but 27 like, or anything. Good. No, but, but, but <laughs> I tell you what, I apply, I apply this and every, I always like to apply the idea of like looking at your own self-reflecting, I should say, self-reflecting yeah. at the end of a day. I love to self-reflect and I like to say, yeah. okay, how could I have done this better? Or sometimes if I'm short with people and I realize I'm being short with people in the moment, I don't know why I'm being short with them. I'm probably irritated yeah. or something else is on my mind that's bothering me, this or that. But then when I actually stop and ask myself, okay, if I'm judging, well, we'll say, we'll, we'll go on the point of judging somebody right now. Like, okay. oh, I hate when that person does that. Okay, we'll yeah. keep it real simple. I hate when that person does that. Then the next question that I usually ask myself is, okay, Jamin, hold up. When do you behave this way? Ooh. And instead of judging them, I attack the issue on myself, and I give myself the chance to think about that and work on it. Most people do that on some level, I do think. I think, though, they immediately dismiss it the moment they can because, it's because they don't want to look at it. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, so, Absolutely. it's very hard to be emotionally honest with yourself. I, I agree, but it's such a relief when you do, man. It's such a relief. Mm. It's 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 profound because now you're really carving out a path for your life and understanding who you are. I, most of our yeah. most of the things that we're upset about is usually because we didn't get something we wanted. Oh. It's as simple as that. Yeah. I didn't get what like I wanted. Then, so everything. I mean, anything. Yeah. We we say, you know, I had issues um, with the WWE. I made a mistake there that I, I didn't own that years ago. When it first happened, I said, they fucked me over. How can they fuck me over? That's the type of company they are. That's what I was thinking. And then later on, I thought about it as I gotten older from that time. And I said, hold on a second, Jamin. They didn't really fuck you over. What happened was you were a very hungry guy and you were being looked at. And you had a great opportunity, and it blew up in your face because you were impatient, actually. You were always trying to set up meetings with people. You were always, I'm sorry, huh? say that again? You were, because you were what? Because I was impatient. Oh, okay, I knew okay, got it. I, was, I was already on the verge of everything working out for me. But oh, I got be, it. for some reason, whatever the reason was, maybe because I, heard, I was talking to my friends and my friends were saying, uh, oh, dude, you got to work harder or you got to do this. Or maybe I was taking too many opinions outside of myself. I'm not really sure. But looking back, yeah. what I did, though, is I rushed the process and I got my ass bit in the process. And, and then I wanted to come back and blame them. They kicked oh. me out. They kicked me out of the building. I was trying to set up a meeting. And they kicked me out of the, they kicked oh, me out of the building because yeah. they said, hey, dude, you're, you're, you're annoying. You're annoying this, pe- this person, so you need to stop. But you know what they did uh, that really hurt my feelings is they went and said, they said I went and followed someone in a bathroom and watched them take a piss and then started trying to have a meeting with them, which didn't happen. And sound, it's so ridiculous, and that really hurt me. Yeah. 
But none, nonetheless, it's not about what they did to me. It was about how I handled the situation myself at the time. And what I wasn't willing to do was look at it and say, okay, dude, you fucked it's up. It's hard. Because you, you, yeah, and I wasn't willing to tell myself that for years. I kept, I kept blaming the company. I, I, you know, it was just like, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. And most of us like to blame the outside so much and never take any responsibility for, for our experience. And, and I think that. there's something to be... Yeah, we yeah, feel stuck. stuck. I mean, an that's illusion. the only thing we have control over is our reaction, what we do, and our reaction to what others do. That's all we have power over. So, I mean, you know, so that takes being emotionally honest with not only yourself but others too, so that you can no longer be a victim. And I've used this analogy before, so that you can, um, instead of being a pawn on the chessboard of life, being pushed around by all these external factors like the WWE. You can raise above that and look at more of an observer, uh, observer's perspective and see <clears throat> what component you had to play, which is the only thing you can control. And then you can free yourself. Then you're no longer a victim. Then you're the best play- player that's moving your own pawns around in life. Those who victimize are themselves Mike victimized. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. So Eric is chomping at the bit here, and I can't. I, I gotta jump in. Um, so one of the things that he's saying that contributes to this is that as humans, we have a tendency to have a plan. We have a focus. We have an idea of how something is going to turn out. Anything, the relationship, the job, you know, anything that we're dealing with. And oftentimes, people have a very difficult time letting go of the idea of what they thought was going to happen. And it gets oh. them caught up in this kind of behavior. Mm. So expectations. Yes. Yes. Always. Expectations for sure. Uh, Damien, what do you do about that? We have these, you know, thwarted expectations, uh, these unrequited expectations. How do you handle that? Stop fucking telling yourself you're entitled to your dreams oh. and everything else. Okay. You well, know what I'm saying? Because because yeah. that's that's developing an attitude a little bit. Of, well, you're entitled, I but you have, this. To, you, have to, you have to manifest it, and you can't expect the world to manifest it for you. Is that what you're saying? I, I essentially I am saying that. I'm saying what, what, what's important is to to whatever it is you're working on, you 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 don't. You don't don't expect that it should come out a particular way for you because this is what you've told yourself and this is the work you put uh, in and, and I think the minute you start doing that you actually take away your power because you're assuming that the world should work by your watch because you're doing things the way that you said you wanted to do them and because the, the, as you know and as as everybody is experiencing right now in the world is things nobody's getting their way right now some people yeah. gyms are closing things are closing you know what I mean. So you got to yeah. kind of go with what you wanted, and the, the, the reason for the panic, I believe, or, I'm sorry, thank this you, is just my thank opinion. You, Rob, the gyms are closing because I hate to listen to the sound <laughs> <Right>. of my <laughs> panting. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, comic relief here. No, I'm now. just saying. I'm just saying. A lot of the panic comes from people. I, in my opinion, thinking. They're entitled to certain things sometimes, and it, and it comes yeah. out rude. It comes out um, – what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? I'm not I'm, – I don't want to be rude. I'm not uh, – because I, I feel like I'm being rude by saying that. It, there's a greediness that comes because you think it has to go the way you want it to. So if you go to the store today and there's no toilet paper, then you're mad at the world that they have your toilet paper instead of just really accepting what is. There's something about accepting what is, and there's a love in what is, and when you hold space for just what's in front of you. This is what's in front of me? Cool. I'm going to work with it the best way I can. I'm going to use it. But still, the the human – Wait, the, real quick, before I forget, because I'm old. I got I got to jump in when I got this, like, on my Teflon brain. The, 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 the human side of me, who rarely watches news anymore, sees this whole video clip of this guy with his heart filled to the brim with toilet paper, and it's like, okay, screw you. What, what makes you think that your asshole is more important than ours? How dare you be that greedy and untitled? Anyway, so yeah. I, I'm not proud of that. Okay, no, but it's how it is. So I think, Eric kept saying, "Yeah, go ahead." Jamie, when you were talking, Eric kept saying, "It's it's like sometimes people 
ex- have the expectation that life owes them something. And, and mm. Eric is saying life doesn't owe us. You know, you're not just because whatever you think that you deserve something doesn't mean you're going to get it. Life does not owe you. You're here to learn. You're here for lessons. You're here to love. But that doesn't mean you're owed something. And he said that kind of falls in line with what you were just saying. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly how I feel. That's all I'm saying, actually, in, in its essence. And Eric put it into great words. It's just life doesn't owe you that. So uh, it's. It's just approaching, I think for me, it's like um, whatever I'm reacting to heavily, good or bad, I understand it's a reflection of myself, but that's also my philosophy. So oh. I, can't, I can't assume that everybody thinks that way, but I assume I am the same as the tree. Um, I assume I'm the same as you. For every time I see you upset or you getting upset or angry at something, I realize I have an empathy that, holy shit, I'm the same exact way. I just think what happens, though, is when you practice the thought of, of understanding that's who you are instead of separating it from who you are, then there's a bigger piece there because, and there's a larger empathy for the people outside of you because you can actually yeah. put yourself in their situation and say, okay, look, I mean, you know, <laughs> we can't relate to everything, but at the end of the day, there are many things we're all very similar in. It, you, you can, yeah. I mean, we can go down the list and, and we're all fucking guilty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I mean, guilty. I mean, it's not a negative thing. It's just like it's, you know, it's a um, teachable moment. Uh, you know, and and you know, I, I I know I got a long way to go because I am so guilty. Well, guilty, but I am evolving through these processes of you know emotional honesty, and um, it's hmm. probably related to the inability to not control, to to let go. So maybe you could speak to that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's usually the problem on all levels, right? And 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 here's the thing about control is we are all experiencing moments where we can wield our power in a way yeah. that works in our favor. And then all of us are experiencing moments. And so it, it, whether it's with like someone having a bunch of money or someone who's super poor and is good at manipulating, right? Or in everything yeah. in between, like we're all experiencing little uh, archetypes and, ex- and ways to express like what it means to be controlling. But I think what, what, what it comes down to is like, I don't know, once again, this is a, a philosophy of mine. I think you got to have a little bit of the fact that we don't know what's going on i think when you don't know there's 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 a lot of um opportunity for growth there versus when i know this should go this way because even if you do know that it should go a particular way and it's right for you and whatever if it doesn't go that way what happens the minute you you lose that power it's this even bigger Mm. illusion that that you have lost all complete control and let's be honest here what's that that is amazing i go ahead yeah, and, and I guess what I was just touching on is let's just be honest here. We all go through moments where we lose control and whatever, but at the end of the day, how many times are you really in that rough of shape? How many times is it really that terrible and the boogeyman has come out and got you? Like, it's really not, uh, I, in my opinion, I, and, and we all experience different levels of pain, but for yeah. the most part, when we get something that we don't want, it's okay. It somehow will be okay, whether you lose a job, whether it's it's a confusion on a relationship and you have to make you have yeah. to move forward, whether it's yeah. money, I mean, we can go on and on about all, all, all the different facets and levels of it. And of course, I understand there's a spectrum, so I'm not just I, I don't want to be too general about it, but at the same time, we all end up okay at the end of the day. And I think yeah. that's a, that's something we could focus on more as as a society that everything yeah, does work things. out. And we're eternal yes. things. What freaking heck can happen to us that's bad? We we. It. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. And no, that that would be my statement on that because yeah. it, it it's 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 not. Let's not complicate this, people. Let's let's not complicate this. Uh, the reason why you're pissed off today or someone's pissed off today about something is because somewhere in their life, and excuse me for my profanity, you're being a piece of shit, and you need to fucking set up yourself in a different way. You need to change your game it. plan a little bit. Le- you know what I'm saying? And I don't. And once again, I'm not saying I'm not saying you're literally a piece of shit. I'm saying you are missing the the self awareness puzzle there, where you are not calling yourself out on something that you should. Yeah. Most people Call say, "Oh, I'm in a terrible out. relationship." 
I'm in a horrible relationship. I don't know what to do. Okay, well, then leave. Well, I can't leave because this, this, and this. Okay, then. So you're being a piece of shit to yourself because you're not okay. developing the courage to do it. Either that or have the conversation. And then they'll say, well, I can't have the conversation with this person because of X, Y, and Z. Okay, then. Well, both of you need to work it out in a way where it's more peaceful. Otherwise, if you're just pretending and assuming that the other person should know what you know, then now we're playing a power game that's actually an illusion. Uh, yeah. I will have to backtrack and say that by um, Lucas, after he lost his brother, went into a very – very dark and dangerous place. And we got Jamin to pull him out of that. And now he is, oh my God, he's a different person. He has a job he loves. People love him. I mean, it's like, he's cooking us dinner right now. It's awesome. And he's cleaning out my pantry. Woohoo! Yeah, <laughs> no way. That's awesome. <laughs> to do it. So it, he's like, wow. Jamin, I mean, I just want to express just to pause and express gratitude for what you have done to save my kid's life because he was, I mean, I, he could have been dead and another son, my only other son. Um, yeah. So thank you for that. Lisa, it's, it's just my pleasure to be human and just like do the thing that really means something to me. And, and, and if that's how I express myself and it helps people, then great. And I, I just yeah. appreciate, uh, I appreciate you believing in me enough and holding space and trusting me with my process yeah. because I'm not traditional and it's, it's, no. all, it's a little Good. bit different. Um, and, and, and just you trusting my process ha- is, is the best gift you can give me because this is me living my expression and, and believing in myself and all that jazz. So like, just, you know, like I love you and, and just thank you. And I thank you and your family for, for putting me in a position even just right now um, and thank Jennifer and Eric. And I thank all you guys just for putting me in a position to hold space for me and allow me to be myself and, and do the best I can here. So thanks. Yeah. But the, the deal is I'm, you, know, you, know, you have this gift to work with young people, especially, I mean, of course, everybody, uh, I mean, I've gotten so many emails of uh, from mothers, especially of course, fathers too, but mothers, Saying that you saved their kid's life, and, and, and you know that's and like you did with Lucas. I mean, so I mean, I, I couldn't imagine losing another kid. It's like I, that would be the end of me, really. So I want to thank you for that. And you guys, y'all need to check them out at JamenOlivencia dot com. I'll put it on the YouTube when I put it up. But okay, so here's the deal. I want to talk about just real briefly. I want your opinion. You know. Our country, and Canada also, is a little different in that people chose to immigrate to it. They were looking for adventure, risk, you know, avoiding persecution, et cetera. So I feel like those are people with ADHD. So we are an ADHD-rich um, country, and, you know, we sapped everybody, all the other countries from ADHD, so – a lot of European nations are uh, ADHD poor, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, okay? It's just a cognitive style, basically. I mean, people with ADHD are hunters. The ones without are gatherers. The hunters have to be impulsive to get their prey. The hunters have to, um, you know, uh, scan their environment, and this is where I'm making my point, to – for their prey and all that stuff. But gatherers can, you know, sit quietly in school desks and they do much better usually. But, um, but me as a person with ADHD, um, I scan my external environment, but I also scan my internal one. I'm always looking for what am I doing that needs to be better. Okay. Uh, you know, how can I uh, look at this person, you know, in front of me and find out what this person needs to hear from me or wants me to do for me? So it's, that's a kind of an ADHD internal reflection, and you were talking about that earlier. So I don't know if you or Eric want to say anything. You know, he had ADHD. Well, you know, being a kid with, uh, I guess you, I, you know, I guess I had ADHD or where I have it or whatever, but I would say that it's actually a superpower 
its ability to access different molds of energy very quickly. So as mad as you can be, you could probably turn it right away too, if you haven't noticed that already. And I think it's sometimes taking what we have, our, our nature, and, and using it and, uh, and, and fine-tuning that. So understanding the fact that you're a little bit all over the place, but also telling yourself simple things like, even in the midst of being all over the place, telling yourself simple things like, hey, I'm going to pay attention to all the things I'm going to be all over the place about today. Now, you may not oh. be on all of those, <laughs> but if you set your yeah. mind already, now you like are that. on uh, – do you understand it's kind of like a subconscious run now? Because what, 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 what the beauty of uh, ADHD is, like I said, you can access different states. Um, the downfall is if your subconscious, your, your little machine in the background is running at a negative tone, you might be looking oh. at the world in, in a very cynical way, which is, is very, uh, it, it can happen that, you know, some days are good, some days are bad, yeah. but I think it's all about, I, I don't know the exact answer to that other than my comment is like, Hey, like it's cool. Anybody that's experiencing that one way or the other, like try to learn from the other and vice versa, because there's a lot of yeah. good information. There's a lot of ways you can use it as a weapon to, to navigate your for life. Good. And, yeah. um, for the good, absolutely. Imagination is a very, very powerful tool. If you're assuming yeah. something, and I, I couldn't tell you how many things I, was, I used to assume because I was actually in fear of what people were going to think of me, and, and yeah. I would make up this assumption about people like, if I saw someone smarter than me, I would assume they were an asshole because I didn't understand ah. them, and, that, and, be, and because I was actually afraid of them, because I was actually oh. scared. So, so sometimes when we assume things, we use our imagination in a very cynical way and, and, and in a way that can actually block you from creating more things. And that's, once again, I'm only talking from experience here. This is just yeah. me calling myself out a thousand different times in my life and saying, okay, dude, you got to work on this. You got to work on that. <laughs> and it's, that's a little bit all over the place too. But at the end of the day, it, for me, and, and, and I think for anybody else, it could make your life a little bit more peaceful when you look at it in, in a more uh, humor type, type of way and, 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 yeah. and not be so hard on yourself. Yeah, you know, hey, cool, I'm a little ADD, cool, but I'm going to use this as a weapon to be better. Just that, yeah. that statement in general is already better than saying, oh, I have ADD and I have a problem paying attention to things. If you say that, and you're your fucked. Is all You've already my lost. Ass and all that. And my mom is on my ass. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's not a disorder, people. It is a cognitive style that has its own strengths, just like the gatherers. Uh, Cotton style has the same strength. So, Eric, you want to uh, say anything about that? Yeah, he just, yeah, he just keeps saying these are just different types of adaptations. You know, the humans adapt to certain things, and this is just another type of adaptation. Like you've been able to take that ADD and kind of adapt it internally. Um, so it's it's what he's saying is it like it like fires different parts of the brain. The ah. you know the hunter gatherer thing. Different parts of the brain are being stimulated. Um, and that doesn't mean that you, he says you can, you can go from being one to another in the same lifetime. Um, oh, wow. You can adapt and change. Yes. Um, and also he was saying earlier, but I didn't get a chance to jump in when you guys were both talking about like, oh, you're guilty of this or guilty of that. And then you guys both were kind of stumbling with the, that word wasn't quite, quite right. Guilty. Yes. And what he was yeah. saying is those are challenges. Those are challenges. Oh, I like mm, that. There we go. God dang yeah. it, I should have pulled like out my sister. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he was saying you guys were both kind of caught up with not that not quite being the right word you were looking for. Yes, um, you're right. And then um, I, I felt that. <laughs> yeah, I totally felt it. How about you, Jamie? Yeah. You felt that? Yeah. I do. I agree. And I thank you, Eric, for that perspective. See, words can – That's in, this is the crazy thing. Words can also – Words have power too, and they can put yes. you in different states. So, so when I use the word guilty, I was like, Ugh, everyone's like, Ugh, like we're all like, Ugh, but like, <laughs> it, but it's funny how our mind. So, so when you're even limited in certain ways, things come out a certain way, and there's an energetic form that comes with that. And and so that I, I really oh, appreciate right. that insight because that made me realize, oh yeah, like these are just little challenges in the game. They all represent yeah, little and, and parts of a level. Yeah, is, like what he's saying is guilt. Guilt kind of can equate to shame, whereas calling it a challenge, there's the underlying idea that you're working on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I yeah. like that. 
powerful. Yeah, very powerful. I love that. Thank you for that. Thank you for your perspective, okay. uh, Eric. Jason, and can you talk to us about what you have to offer, how people can reach you, talk about your YouTube channel, uh, anything? Yeah, um, yeah. you guys, first and foremost, you can always find me on Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff under Jamin Olivencia or 11th Warrior. Uh, JaminOlivencia.com is my website. My whole entire uh, mission, guys, is to hold conversations that allow us to become more stronger. So I use it as a focusing tool to fine-tune our own potency. I believe that conversation is a great weapon to um, kind of uh, sharpen your blade and, 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 and figure out better ways to approach the world, uh, approach communication situations, especially if I'm working with your kids. Um, a lot of people's uh, challenges that I've, I've seen in my time is that their kids are uh, simply just afraid to connect with others. So, uh, yeah, guys, I mean, whether you're an adult uh, aspiring to be whatever or to continue your energy, uh, in the right way, or you're someone that's in shambles. Either way, I'm here to hold a conversation with you and allow us to grow as a as a light. It's fun. Yeah, and you're amazing. Um, and Jennifer, you and I are going to have a session about uh, the coronavirus. That's going to be fun tomorrow. I got a lot yeah. of questions, guys. Don't send me any more yeah. because I don't have time for all that. But uh, yeah, Jennifer, you want to talk about yourself? Um. Yeah, um, Psychic Medium, Jennifer Doran. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, or the web under that, PsychicMediumJenniferDoran.com. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay, I don't so know. Jen- I'm a psychic Jennifer? medium, so. <laughs> yeah, of course. Jennifer, yeah. Jamin, Eric, is there anything you guys need to share before we take um, calls from listeners? Yes, he says, to, he says, I love you, Mama, because he didn't get to say that in the beginning. Oh, my God. So. Oh, God. oh, my God. You know it. I love you so much. <laughs> oh. I'm going to go weed out in the garden and put preen out to the pre-emergent thing after this, so hopefully it won't be too hot. But that's mm-hmm. – and work on my novel. But not an, until later. So, uh, Jamin, you want to say anything else before we uh, take callers? <laughs> No, I'm good. Let's go. Let's go with the callers. Uh, Rachi, let's go take one. I, you know, when there's a one 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 one, I think it's international, so I have to kind of pick them first. Hi there. How are you doing? Hello, anybody there? Hi. Welcome to the show. Okay, I will try that person later because I don't know. Uh, okay, so let's take somebody from the 516 area code. 516 area code. Hi there, how are you doing? Hi, everybody. This is Dee. Hi, Dee. How are you doing? I, I miss you. Uh, we connected last week in regards to I'm um, the mommy with the, um, unfortunately, I'm getting to see my daughter nine hours a week. I know. And I um, thank you so much. And I'm touching base to let you know that the court was postponed at least 30 days now, the court date. It was supposed to be the end of this month. So I'm looking no. for the um, the opportunities in this shift because I don't like to go negative at all. I go up with it. I believe there's divine intervention awesome. happening here with this whole panic. Uh, so wow. with that said, my question is I'm shifting my business into virtual classes, virtual yoga, massage, doing the best I can with that. But there's a part of me that I feel like I'm missing something in order to implement in my business so that I could set the foundation to provide the financial security for my daughter and I for when I get her back full custody. Is there any way we could tap into that a little bit? If that question makes sense. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So what, what Eric is saying is that you need partnerships. Um, it's hard to network right now um, because you can't really get out and, and meet people, but you need partnerships. You need networking um, is, is where you need to focus. And, yes, it's hard right now, um, but you can do that online. You've really, really got to hit the social media stuff. Like what, LinkedIn? Or, I mean, that, give us some more specific, Eric, on how she should LinkedIn, 
Facebook, Instagram, um, just getting yourself out there. Getting you, you've got to brand yourself, is what he's saying. That's so create exactly a brand. What I'm you know, yeah. Oh, good. Yes. Yeah, you've got to create a brand, and of course, you know the stuff that you're doing. Oh, there are a lot of people doing it, so you've got to find that thing that makes you stand out. And, and that's what is that? shifting into the prenatal and childbirth world. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Yes, that would be fantastic. Oh. Yes, you, like a niche. Yes, you need a niche, a focus, um, a focus on what you offer, but wide on where you offer it, if that, if that makes sense. Well, Wait, probably say to that reach again? Oh, yeah, okay. the so, world. Yeah. Um, so yeah, focus on, on what you do, what you offer. So yes, the prenatal, um, that would be a good, fo- a good focal point to what you offer, but you need to be like marketing yourself on a bigger scale. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it, especially yeah. if you're going to be able to be doing some of this stuff virtually, then it, you're not limited by geographics. Exactly. So Jay, which is it's, what a pro- I'm it's a process. This is a process. It's not going to happen overnight. Okay. Yeah. Of course. I, I, if I could do this diligently and it'll give oh. me something in three years, I'm happy. <laughs> oh, that's, that's pretty perfect. good. Perfect. A three-year plan is great. <laughs> yeah. So, Jamie, do you help people with their careers like this kind of thing? Or is that uh, – or who I would you de- recommend? To do I that? do. I do. I do. I, uh, I definitely help people always fine-tune their blades. So my question to you is – and this, I know you're coming in asking the question, but I'm going to ask you the question. What do you think, Where? what area do you think you can develop uh, more potently? The consistency in my social content and posting. That's what you do. Then that's what you do. Do you understand? Because if you can follow that internal instruction on the simplest of levels, then that internal instruction will give you the next piece that you need. To to say what that is right away will be tough. And I love what Eric said uh, about social media. That's definitely going to be – that's the the game today. Everything is commercialized on there. So that's where you're going to have to put your focus. Yeah. I'm it's sorry? definitely exhausting. As an empath, it's exhausting to be on the technologies, but I'm trying to break through that. Oh, yeah. Wow. All right, so, uh, Jamin, do you still, like, uh, well, of course, now you're much more far along, but do you still offer, like, a little free assessment for people on the phone? Or? I do. I do. Thank you, Elisa. I really appreciate you um presenting my, my work to people, that really means a lot. Yeah, so to anybody that's listening, including the one that's we're on the phone with I mean, right now, it, you know, I offer, okay. so, yeah. I offer 30 minutes. I offer a 30-minute assessment where we get to know each wow. other, and quite honestly, I always go over 30 minutes. I always really enjoy getting to know people. Mm-hmm. I think in 30 minutes, it's really hard to get to know somebody, but yeah. within 45 minutes to an hour, um, I can tell you right now, uh, we will find something, and that would be free of charge, and uh, to take just it's to amazing. even take the time for that. Um, I'm good. Like, you know, I'm, I'm looking to just enhance your life, whoever you are. So let's, uh, so if you need an hour with me and you, and, and, and I'm sorry, your name again, I feel like such a dick. Cause I, I don't know your D. name. What's your name again? D. My name is D. D. All right, D. So check it out, D. Contact me if you want after this, and we can uh, take some time and, and really uh, look at who you are as a human. And, and see what well, little aspects you? we can work on. Yes, hell yeah. Contact me at Wait, Jamin, Jamin dot yeah. Jamin, J-A-M-I-N dot Olivencia, that's O-L-I-V-E-N-C-I-A at gmail.com or you can go to my website, jaminolivencia.com, find me there. Either way, super easy to find me. If, if you need any help, um, somebody could definitely point you in the direction if you didn't get that now. So let's talk. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you guys can look at, uh, go to YouTube and look up the uh, search for 11th warrior and see how bad he is. But anyway, so yeah, I mean, you, you guys, this guy's a light worker. Okay. I'm just saying, all right. Thank you D for calling in. Keep in touch. Okay. All right. You have a good evening. Talk to you later. You, you too, darling. And be safe. And all of you guys be safe, be safe, wash your hands, don't touch your face. 
do not get around old or at risk people. They need to self quarantine. But anyway, that's the doctor and me shouting out. Anyway, so uh, see who's next. Got somebody from the three two three area code. Hi there. How are you? Oh, what happened? Three. Oh, they disappeared. Oh my God. Call dropped. Oh. All right. So okay, we'll do the five one five area code. Oh, hello. Hi, Hi. How is everyone? I'm doing fine. Good. If you are, are you doing fine too? I'm doing great. I'm all prepped and prepared. I'm ready. <laughs> Good. What's your What's your first um, name? My Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Lisa. I live in Colorado. I Hi, Lisa. Is it, hi. I just wanted. I had a um, very close dear. She would have been my sister-in-law. Passed away. Her name was Carrie. So if I can hear anything from her or what I need to hear the most right now. How do okay, you spell I, her name? Her name is Carrie. We called her T. Yeah, but how do you spell her name, Carrie? Terry, T-E-R-R-I. Oh, Terry. Oh, I thought it was Carrie. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, got it. No worries. So, so as soon as you said her name, I just got this energy um, come over me, big smile, just charismatic energy. Um, I don't know, just just really um, intense. Um, and the first thing that she says to me is, I had to go, I couldn't stay, I had to go, I couldn't stay. Mm-hmm. Um, although yeah. I will tell you, she is making me feel like she did fight to stay. Like she, she tried to stay, she just could not. Do you understand that? You've got it down pat, absolutely, yeah. Oh. Was she funny? Did she have a good sense of humor? She just makes me laugh. Her energy just makes me want to like get up and do something. <laughs> like, aww. yeah, she she makes she makes yeah. We laughed together a lot. Um, not even a, within a week ago or something, I woke up singing the song Moon Shadow, and I kept <laughs> the only words I knew were Moon Shadow. And then finally, I yeah. turned my iPad on, and just like two days later, and the song came on automatically, and I knew oh. it was her. Oh. Yeah, and I just yeah, you know she's okay and she's still around, but man, she's got a she's got a lot of energy. She's <laughs> what's she doing? She's doing great. She um right now she's just kind of like jumping up and down. Like tell her I'm okay. Tell her I'm okay. Tell her I love her. Oh. You know, tell him I I miss him and I'm looking out for him. And um, <laughs> she likes to go in the car. She likes to so so you might sense her energy in the go. car. I can't, every time I go hiking, I go into the mountains. Um, I talk to her like she's sitting right next to me. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Um, mm-hmm. But she's great. She she's great, and she was happy to be part of your family for the time that she was, because she's telling me that you truly made her feel like she was part of the family. Vice versa. Oh my that, God! That's what I said. Wow. Yeah, that's what I so said what happened to her? Lisa, what oh, ha- uh, she had to MS. She oh. had MS, and then a brain tumor, and she just went yeah. down fast. Yeah. yeah, but she fought so, I mean, I uh, for a while, right? She did fight it. Yeah, yeah she was. She didn't go. Okay. We had plans. Yeah, and of course, you know, she's she's fine now. You know, um, of course, happy happy where she is and everything. So she's she's good. Absolutely. I know, I know that, yeah. But you know, is there any signs that she gives me, or something specific when I, you know? Well, like the car. I mean, definitely in the car, right? Right. Or, or yeah, and the, and the music, the the songs. She she would send oh, butterflies yeah. or little like small birds, little birds. Um, okay. Uh, she would she would send those to you as well. Um, but she's just yeah, you know, look she's always her. around, so she can always hear you. Yeah. Oh. I feel her any, all the time. Yeah, but I just, any messages? I, you know, you know, any messages for uh, for for Lisa from Terry? Final messages? Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, I was I was I got confused with the names. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, she says that you're going to need to be strong for the family. You got mm. something going on. In the family, and, and you're going to be the one that holds everybody together. Oh, girl, girl, I know, man, I know. Yeah. Oh, I know. I've always. So she's got your back on that. Oh. You guys are awesome. I, that's, you that's, are that's too. Exactly what I, 
Yes, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Wow, Jennifer, you're so awesome. Psychic medium oh, Jennifer Doran dot com. People, you've got to before she's booked up she's for five years. Seriously, I'm really I mean she's so good. She really is. Yeah. You, if you love Thank yourself, you, you, will, you. you will you will book a session with her if you really care about yourself. Um all right, so we got somebody from the seven three four area code. Hi there, how are you? Hello. Hi. This is uh Chris. Hey Chris. How you doing? Welcome to the show again. Uh- I have a question for Eric, and uh, I would also like to say that Eric punked me once, and oh I'm a my senior God. citizen. Oh, my God. Sorry. Sorry in advance. I'm kidding. He doesn't, dis- he doesn't discriminate against senior citizens. Oh, that's good. <laughs> but my question is, is uh, I don't make enough uh, on Social Security to live. And uh, I'm wondering, I took a class in hypnosis, the quantum healing hypnosis. Oh, and uh-huh. But so far I, I haven't, I've only had two clients and it's been almost a year. And it's like, should I give this up and try something different? He said, okay, so he says, don't give it up. Um, you don't have to give it up, but, um, yes, you do need to try something different as well, um, to, to generate some more money because, so what, what you have, he says is a need, you, you have a need for more money. Um, so you've got to do something that's going to generate a little bit more consistent money. Uh, but don't give that up. It's not a one or the other. Okay. Okay. Um, any chance any you can suggest- find a little part-time job? Yeah. It's so hard right now because, you know, this is not the time to be looking for a job, but just something like part-time, even like 10 hours a week, is there something that you could um, find to just to generate that little bit more income? Um, and connections, to get maybe, some more with money. potential clients. And maybe connections with uh, potential clients, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely still want to work on the hypnosis and, and bringing clients in, but there does feel like a bit more of an urgency for money kind of right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay. so yes, stay with the hypnosis, um, but also check out other options, explore other options. Um, just temporary little jobs, your, even if it's, oh. yeah, working at yes. a store or anything, anything. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Jamin, can you jump in here? Yeah, Chris, right? Yes. Hey, so what what are your talents? Uh, well, I was secretary for a long time, and um, hey, you were what? You, you, you cut off. I'm sorry, baby. I, I, at least you cut off for me. With the secretary, yeah. and then I oh, okay. just a while. That's okay. really slow. And you, you, you enjoy doing the hypnosis? Uh, I do, and I mean, it's like you know, you get excited to see. Well, what are they going to say next? Oh. Uh, what are your um, what what how how are you? Do you you have social media? Do you use social media a lot, Chris? <laughs> Uh, I'm on Facebook, and I tried to set up a Facebook page for the hypnosis, and it just won't let me do it. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. If you need any help with that. Oh, you need to get a high Sorry? schooler to help you set up a freaking page. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah. Or, or a 13-year-old. I don't care. I mean, you know how they are. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jamin. Well, uh, what I was going to say, if you need any help with that, Chris, I can certainly help you out with that. I'm, I'm, for, for some reason, what I'm thinking is um, it, it, it's someone in your situation, I think a Facebook Live, something where you're talking to people and telling them about your passions oh. and what you do and, and, and constantly 
offering that, but also it talking about your experience here on earth. And I just think the, I think people are always yearning for stories and they're inspired by stories and you don't know this, but you may inspire somebody enough where they're going to want to work with you. And uh, this is obviously it would take a lot more work and talking to, to discuss anything mm-hmm. that's deeper than that. But I, I just think a Facebook live and telling your story could really help you. Um, I just think that's the trend that's happening today with people and um there's an opportunity in that okay so and, and uh, YouTube, I, youtube live too but what about um maybe she could even on youtube or facebook live show uh, her giving a session for somebody what do you think about that 100 percent. I, I as long as that person's okay with it as long yeah. as you get to showcase what you're doing and and yeah. even creating videos it, it's not income right away but the there's something about when you do it in the doing process of things things seem to end up falling on your lap now it may not be in the way of uh doing hypnosis regularly but it will be in the way of something else i just i believe when you're constantly attacking what you do know controlling the controllable uh versus the uncontrollable there's there's a lot more room and space for new things to become born. Yeah. And it's very easy to just uh, create little, little tiny ebooks, ebooks about hypnosis. Boom. And you put it on Amazon and you get direct deposit. Cancel Amazon um, International and regular Amazon. Boom, boom, boom. So there's all sorts of ways to have side hustles, so to speak. What do you think, Eric? Uh, at the moment, she's overwhelmed, he said. I know. <laughs> Are I you feel feeling it. overwhelmed? <laughs> uh, yes, I am feeling overwhelmed. Uh, <laughs> and nobody in my family will even let me talk to any of their friends about doing this. No. And of course, but they're just really against it. And, oh, um, you know, yeah, no uh, support. And, you just... One step at a time, one step at a time. So Jamin offered to kind of help you with stuff. Maybe take him up on that offer to set up your social media and then go one step at a time. Do your first video, you know, yeah. maybe it's only two or three minutes. It doesn't have to be a huge thing. You just, you just, the consistency with social media is what's important. Yeah. All right. So that's step one. Uh, and then you can call back in later on another show and yeah. find out what step two is. Okay. Thank you, Chris, for calling in. Thank thank you. you. And uh, to Eric, and uh, Eric did tell me uh, when I had a reading that I was a star seed. And that doesn't make things. That what? He said I was a star seed. And it does or does not make sense? Well, it doesn't make anything easier. I feel like I don't belong here. Oh, I know. Yeah, it gives no. this sense of not belonging. I understand that. So, wait, how did um, he uh, prank you? Uh, well, I was listening uh, to uh, some uh, one of the mediums talking about getting pranked, and yeah. it was like a year or two later, I went to the store, and uh, you know, to the grocery store, and when I came out and got in my car, my seat was so far back I couldn't reach the pedals. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, I just so thought that, that's the only thing that could have happened because you know yeah. I have to manually uh, reach down and push the button to move my seat back. Oh yeah, that's and it. I can do that. The little shit. And then <laughs> there was another time when um, I ended up cutting my hair. And I was reading something online a couple of nights later, and I was just really, really tired. And I was reading something, um, well, it was about the um, origins of the Vatican. And I know that sounds weird, but it's like somebody said in my mind, you didn't do so bad on your hair. Oh, (laughs) my God, that's awesome. Thank Thank you. I, I know That's now cute. how the, the mediums feel when they get these messages from Eric. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I love him yeah. so much. I miss him. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you, Chris, for calling in. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
Thank you. Oh, my boy, my boy, my boy. All right, so, so we have somebody from the 787 area code. But I want to first say that, you guys, I know I sound all cheerful and stuff, and usually I'm so happy, but there's still, that you know, people don't realize how um, how deep the grief is, especially since we're twin flames, and how that brokenness is never going to go away. And I do shield you guys from it a lot uh, because I don't want to be a wah, 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 Debbie Downer. And, you know, I usually am so optimistic. I've always been, even before Eric died, uh, uh, you know, trying to see the best in people, the best in situations. But don't let my cheery attitude fool you into thinking I am absolutely impervious to what this tragedy has done to me and my family. I just saying. Anyway, so we got somebody from the 787 area code. Hi there, how are you? Hello, Lisa. Hello, Eric. Um, Jack Hi. And Hello. This is uh, first of all, thank you for everything. I, I love everything I've heard, and I follow the blog always. Uh, my buddy Eric, I love you, and thank you for being always with me. I feel your presence. Oh. <sighs> Yes, absolutely. I have two questions for Eric. One is uh, very important. It's uh, about my brother. His name is William O'Neill. He's actually been set back uh, for for a job. And the other is about my work. We only have time for one question. I'm having a really hard time I'm having a really hard time. Yeah, you're breaking up a lot. You're breaking up a lot, but we oh. only have three minutes before we run into the other show. So, really quickly, what's the first que- the most important question, sweetie? Okay, it would be for about my brother William O'Neill. Okay. Uh, before he gets a job, you know, how, how long will he be waiting? Because it's been very hard for. Him. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so timelines are not you know hard and fast, but it may be another six months. It may be oh, a while. Th- this, yeah. Oh, I think he, she um, got dropped for some reason. Gone. Okay. Yeah, the connection was terrible. Yeah, the connection was bad. All right, so six months. Uh, all right, anything um, you, Jamin, or Eric, or Jennifer want to add before we close out the show? Just that I love you guys and thank you so much. And Eric says I love you to both of you. I love you. I love you. Well, Jamin, I love you too, Jen. Oh, thanks, Eric. Oh, and you too. <laughs> anyway, so Damon, Damon yeah. Alabincia dot com, Eleventh Warrior, Psychic Medium, Jennifer Doran dot com. Of course, I'll put this all on the YouTube. But, but thank you so much for being an awesome guest, Damon. And thank you, Jennifer, for being yeah. oh god, such a wonderful voice. You guys are baby. incredible. Right. You guys Thank are you. incredible. Like, just blown away by the love. Blown away by the love. Yeah. I love it. I feel yeah. it. It's, you guys Me are too. all incredible people. Just thanks for, for being in my life. As and are you. For the callers, thanks for being in my life, too. Yeah. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you, guys. Until next uh, Tuesday. And you guys be careful. Don't panic. Don't hoard. 90 yeah. seconds is killing me. And, and so, yeah, so just uh, if you – feel sick or have any symptoms, um, you know, don't, don't expose yourself to anybody. And also anybody who is an elderly person or at a risk, risk person, please self quarantine, please. And that's all I'm going to say for now. I love you guys. See you next Tuesday. Bye. 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 Love you, Eric.